Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to another edition on Immigrate with Ami. This video is a continuation of the previous video I posted here on my YouTube channel, How to Move to Sweden Without a Job Offer, the Swedish Job Seekers Visa that was introduced this July. So, I thought to make this video to guide anyone who will be needing some guidance on how to fill the application form. My husband is here with me as well. He'll be taking you through the process of filling the application form. So, if you're in search of a job in Europe, you're interested in working in Sweden, but you haven't seen that video yet, the link will be up in the card here and I'll also leave it in my description box so you can check it out. Please keep in mind that for you to be eligible to apply for this visa category, you should have a master's degree or if your educational qualification is equivalent to a master's degree, then you can apply. I remember vividly in that video, I made mention of university degree. I'm sorry, I was meant to say master's degree. So if you have master's degree, or your educational qualification is equivalent to it, then you can go ahead and apply for this visa. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more informative videos. And yeah, keep watching. Hello guys, uh, good afternoon. So uh, Ami already did the introduction. Uh, so I'm just here to do like a, a demonstration of how to fill uh, this form. Okay, so we'll just go it through, we'll go through it together, and then I'll just show you, uh, you know, one item to another. Okay, so this is the form, this is the first page. Um, you can see the topic there, it's a residence permit for highly qualified persons to look for work or to start a business in Sweden. Okay, so these are the instructions, so please read through them uh, very well so i am applying for of course it's the residence permit to apply for a job okay or to investigate the possibilities of starting a business for a period of so according to uh, the policy you can apply for this residence permit for up to nine months so you have to tick here as you can see the form so you don't need to print out the form and then you know fill it by hand uh, from your PDF viewer, you can actually fill it before printing out to sign, okay? So it makes it uh, neater. So you tick on the box to indicate that you are applying for the residence permit. And then here, I would say, of course, you are at liberty to, you know, set how many months, but I would say, you know, indicate the, you know, the maximum allowed time, which is nine months. So I'll just write nine months here, okay? So you need to set uh, the date, like uh, an estimated time when you think you can arrive uh, in Sweden. Don't forget that you know the application you know will take some time, so you have to factor in all of that. So this is uh, where the beginning of August, let's say October. Okay, so you can see the date format here. So it's year. The month and the date okay so we'll fill it in that format so i have 2022 okay the month is october okay and imagine i'm planning to move there by first of october zero one so here you need to put in your personal details all right so starting with your son name so you put in your son name there okay now, for people who used to have maybe uh, another son name, imagine for ladies that are married and then did a change of name, this is where you put your former son name, okay, if you have. So it's not everyone that has. So imagine it was Mark, for example. And then here, you have to put your first names as it is on uh, your ID document. So I know that, you know, in, in, in our passport, we usually have the the first name and the middle name. So the first name and the middle name will be your first names, okay? So you have to put the two here. So imagine your first name is Samuel and then your middle name was uh, maybe John, okay? 
These are just uh, examples. So put your date of birth and your personal ID number. Okay. So you can also so always look at the format that they want you to use in filling out the information. Okay. So we'll follow this format. So imagine the date of birth was let's say first of January nineteen ninety. Okay. So it will be one nine nine zero. Okay. Month is January and then the date was January. Okay. So here, according to this instruction, you don't need to put any space or any slash or any hyphen, you know, between the year, the month and the date. Okay. And then your ID number. So you are using your passport, for example, put your passport number. So let's say it's A112345, you know, something like that. Okay. Your citizenship, put, you know, your country of citizenship. So if you are from Nigeria, then your citizenship is Nigerian. So you put Nigerian, okay? And then if you have previous citizenship, so for those maybe who got another citizenship over time, maybe you have more than one, of course, uh, you should put your previous citizenship here if you have one. Your place of birth uh, is talking about the particular city or town where you were born. So let's just choose a city, Abuja, of course, and the country is Nigeria. All right. Ah, okay. So here, uh, this is where you put your native language. Okay. And then if you have other languages that you speak. Okay. So for me, I will put English. All right. And then if you have other languages that you speak, I mean, if you speak, uh, the Nordic languages, uh, maybe Swedish or you know Finnish, that will be a very good advantage. But if you don't, of course, it's not uh, compulsory. So imagine you spoke French or Portuguese or Swedish, you can add it here. All right. If you don't, there's no point lying. Okay. So your marital status. So if you are married, you put it in that you are married. If you are married, so imagine someone who is unmarried. You tick. Your sex. So either male or female, okay, you select that also. So here is where you put your passport details, starting with the type of the passport, okay? So there are different types of passport. We have the normal national passport, we have diplomatic passport and stuff like that. So if you are using the normal passport, just click national passport, okay? And then here you put the passport number that you put already here, okay? So it should be the same number. So like that okay now this is where you put the authority that issued the passport okay so for example my passport imagine my passport was issued by nigeria immigration service abuja nigeria i just put nigerian immigration service abuja so it's usually written on the data page of your passport. So you can pick the information from there. Okay. Abuja, Nigeria. So you can also add Nigeria. So this is the date when your passport was issued. So let's imagine that my passport was issued on the first day of this year. So it's going to be 2022. Okay. Following the same format 01, 01. Okay. And then this is. Uh, the, the 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 validity of your passport when will it expire so that date is also on your passport data page so imagine it will expire in, in in five years okay so let's just pick a date in the next five years so let's do 20 27 okay so zero one zero one okay so these are just you know examples okay now, if you are living in a country other than your home country, so imagine you're a Nigerian and you are living outside Nigeria, okay? So if you are living outside Nigeria, that is where you click on yes. If you are living in your home country, you should click no, okay? Because when you live in your home country, you don't need a permit. But if you are living outside, you need a permit. That is when you should click yes. So in this case, imagine that the person is a Nigerian uh, living in Portugal, so you have to click yes, and then put the country here, Portugal, okay, and then 
your residence permit that you have it has a validity this is where you put the validity okay so for example i can put from so imagine i've been living in portugal for the past uh, two years so maybe since 2020 so we can do 2020 okay 01 01 sorry 01 okay until so my validity imagine is till next year uh january so 2023 01 you understand so this is for people who live outside their own country don't forget that if you don't just click no and then you don't need to put anything here so your contact details so this is not your address in your home country it is the address where you currently reside okay so imagine you are living at uh, 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 number one uh, let's say abc street okay uh, abuja nigeria okay if you also have a postal code i know that for nigeria we don't really use a postal code but if your address has a postal code all the details that you can put in this space for your full address please put it there okay and they are not asking for your for your p.o box so it's not a p.o box address it's your full residential address where you currently live okay so here you put your email address so let's say it's a b c d e uh, at gmail.com all right and then you put your telephone number don't forget to put your country code so for portugal it's a plus three five one and they usually start with a nine and then it's a one two three blah, blah, blah. you know just put your number as it is now here it's for imagine that before you apply for the visa you already made a reservation of where you will live in sweden okay or maybe you have a, a friend or family member who is planning to host you you can put their address here if you don't have an idea where you are going to live then there is no put no need to put anything here you can leave it blank okay so point number four is financial support which is very important so they are given two options either you have assets meaning you have you know money in your bank account to support yourself in that period when you are searching for job you know or you have other means maybe somebody is supporting you but i would say this please as a matter of you know as a matter of uh, common sense i wouldn't say you should use this other option because if you put the other then you need to start explaining yourself it's always it gives more credibility to your application if you are using your bank details you have enough money in your account so to save yourself this explanation just click this okay and then you will provide copies of your bank statement which shows that you have enough money okay all right so you don't need to put any explanation here if you choose choose bank assets all right so here they are asking that how much money are you will you have every month to support yourself now i'm not going to give you a figure but you need to find out the minimum amount okay for the living cost on a monthly basis in sweden and ensure that your amount you the amount you put here is not lower than that so imagine if on the average in sweden you need i mean just an example 600 euros as living cost i will make funds available for 700 800 euros per month so that i can show the authority that i have enough funds to support myself because this uh, category of residents you know does not guarantee that you have a job so you must show them that you can support yourself even if the job doesn't come for the entire period of your stay okay good so number five is uh the health insurance but one of the requirements for this application is a comprehensive health insurance so you must i mean there are a lot of uh, uh, organizations that you know do you know a lot of health 
insurance companies that do this. So, uh, of course, you need to tick this because you have to, you need to sign a comprehensive health insurance to cover that period. Okay, so imagine that I'm planning to stay there for nine months. I can even do a health insurance for maybe 10, 11 months just to show them that at least within that period of nine months, I have a comprehensive health insurance to cover, okay, for the period of my stay. So you put the, the name of the company, ABC Limited, uh, maybe Nigeria or something like that, okay? And then this is where you put the date when the insurance policy is valid. So one thing I'll tell you is that if you are planning to go Maybe, maybe you are, you know, on this application, you put the date that you, you want to arrive in Sweden on the 1st of October of this year. Make sure that your insurance policy covers that date. So don't say that you want to arrive on the 1st of October and then your insurance policy starts on the 2nd or on the 3rd. No, your insurance must start almost, you know, on the date that you leave your country. So depending, imagine you are not taking a direct flight and Maybe you leave Nigeria on the 30th of September. You are going to arrive in Sweden on the 1st of October. Let your insurance cover you right from the time you are leaving your country. Okay? So put that date from so, 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 so date to so, 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 so date. Okay? Now, uh, number six says previous applications for permits in Sweden. So if you have applied for a residence permit before or you have applied for a visa to go to Sweden before, this is where you indicate. So if you have never done that, just click no. If you have, please don't lie. Put yes if you have and put the year, okay? So no, we're assuming no. Okay, so this is for people who have uh, visited Sweden or the other Schengen countries, like Portugal, France, uh, you know, uh, Spain, you know, and so on. There are quite a number of them. So if you have visited any of these countries before, this is where you need to indicate. So put the name of the country. So imagine I visited Portugal before uh, from, uh, imagine, uh, maybe it was uh, 2019, uh, 01, 01, until... Uh, 2019, uh, let's say January 20, for example. So please put all the dates for the countries that you have visited within the Schengen zone, okay? This is not talking about the country where you reside. It's talking about previous visits, okay? So this is dif different, all right? Now, this is where you, uh, you know, give them details of your previous study. So the first one says, school education up to and including secondary level okay so imagine you attended a primary school and then a secondary school or a high school this is where you put the details so imagine your primary school was a abc uh, elementary school uh, John Street, Lagos, Nigeria, for example, okay? The number of years, so imagine you spent six years in the elementary school, the primary you put six years, and then here you put the, the year that you finished the elementary school. So imagine it was uh, 1995, just put 1995, and then here will be your high school, which is A, B, C, again, <laughs> high school, for example, okay? Put, you know, the street, put the city, put the country, okay, as above. Also, I know that for Nigeria, high school, you know, typically six years, and then put the date when you finish. So imagine you finish 2005, put it there, okay? And then this uh, next, this next rows are uh, for your university and college education, okay? So you have to state the specialization, the level of education, and then the name of the university, okay? So imagine, so imagine I have a master's and a bachelor's degree. So I will start from my master's degree, all right? So I would say, uh, 
masters, sorry, yeah, masters in education, okay, uh, University of Nigeria, for example, number of years, maybe it was two years, when you finished, maybe 2000, and 19, for example. Bachelors, you see, put you know, bachelors in uh, education. Okay. So if it's a four year course, you put four. If it's five, you put five. Okay. So you finish, imagine you finish in 2014. All right. And then you can leave the rest block. If you have more, uh, college and education, please put it there. Also, if you have done vocational education before, okay, you have, you know, uh, gone to a vocational school or vocational training, this is where you put the details following this format above, okay? Now, they want to know what you want to do when you arrive to Sweden. Of course, uh, if you are going uh, with the mindset of establishing a business there, this is where you explain, you know, your plans to establish your business. So you can say that, okay, this is the kind of business I am looking forward to establishing in Sweden. And I chose Sweden because of social, social reason. And then I want to establish this type of business because of social, social reason. Okay, maybe... Okay, this is a need in Sweden that I want to meet. It's a business need I want to meet. And then, you know, this is how it will contribute to the economy of Sweden, that kind of thing. If you are planning to look for a job, this is where you explain the skills that you have, which is a need in Sweden, and then how you think you are going to fit in into the workforce in Sweden. Okay, so just give them, Don't you don't need to talk too much, but showcase your skills showcase your business plans and showcase the reason why you arrive at that decision okay now here they are saying what do you plan to do if you do not find work or do not start a business in sweden okay so i think this is more like a trap okay i think the logical answer should be to leave sweden okay, nobody is saying that you will leave <laughs> but if it doesn't work out after that period of stay uh, the reasonable to, the thing to do will be for you to leave. So just click on leave. If you click on other, you must be ready to explain yourself. Okay, this is immigration issue, so you have to be very careful. All right. Now this is like a, an open, open, uh, open-ended question. Okay, this is where you can add other information that you think can enhance your application. Okay. So it might, and you know, let me think of an example. So maybe there are additional skills. Maybe there are some researches that you have made about Sweden. Okay, different things. Maybe you have families and friends there and what they have told you about Sweden. Okay, so it's open-ended. It doesn't have to follow a particular format, but please be creative. Ensure that whatever you put here is going to enhance your application. Okay. All right, uh, so number 11. So this is where you need to state which Swedish embassy or the consulate that your, the decision regarding your application should be sent to. Okay, so I mean, if you, it, it should be, uh, ideally it should be the country where you reside, okay? So if you are living in Nigeria, of course, put the Swedish embassy, whatever is located, maybe Lagos or Abuja. If you live in other countries, find out first where the Swedish embassy is, where, you know, where, you know, either the embassy or the consulate, ensure, if it's a consulate, ensure that they also treat, you know, visa application, residency application, because there might be some consular offices that they don't treat such issues, and you might need to go elsewhere when it comes to... Uh, you know, applying for residence permit or visa. So please confirm before you fill this section, okay? All right, so here in the end, uh, before the signature, uh, before the signature section, 
uh, this is just additional information for you to know exactly what and what you know how to package a document so first they say that if so your educational document if they are not uh, issued in english in french in spanish in german or one of the nordic languages so nordic languages like uh, swedish like uh, finnish okay okay so if it's not issued in one of these languages then you need to do a translation to uh, to one of these languages so imagine that your uh, educational uh, your educational uh, uh, credentials was issued in let me give let me give an example in, in Turkish language, then you will need to translate it to one of these languages. But if it's already in one of these languages, then you don't need to uh, translate it. Okay. So apart from your educational document, these are the other documents that you need to add. So a copy of your passport, okay, which shows you know, your identity. So basically the data page of your passport, because this is where they can find all of this uh, information. And then if you have, if you are living outside your country, outside your home country, and we are using a foreign residence permit, you should also submit copies of that, okay? And of course, please note this. They say if your passport is about to expire, please try to renew it before you make this application. You understand? Because the, when they give you a permit, they will not issue a permit that is beyond the passport period of validity. So imagine your passport will expire in, in nine months. Okay. And then you want to submit an application at this moment to start, uh, you know, to reside in, in Sweden from October. And you're applying for nine months. You know, that will not work because from October, if they count nine months, your, your passport would have expired before then. So if you are, you know, you need to look at everything and ensure that the validity of your passport covers, you know, the period you are intending to reside uh, in Sweden. Okay. Also, uh, your degree certificate, okay, and the extract from the records, which is your transcript. This is what, so when they talk about the extract of your record, they are talking about your transcript from your university. Okay. Also, if it they already you know spoke about languages, so note this language. So if your uh, degree certificate and your transcript is not in this language, you need to translate it, and you also need to submit copies of the original as well. Okay, then also you need to submit copies of your bank statement. So one of uh, the conditions is that you must be able to support yourself, right? So you need to also submit, and uh, usually you should print out, you know, your transaction history for, let's say, the past six months, okay? Ideally, uh, for, for, you know, visa application, it's usually six months, okay? And then also, uh, we spoke about the certificate of comprehensive insurance, so you should also attach it. And then you need to write a letter of consent for the Swedish Council. So, I mean, in Europe, they have what they call, the, you know, the data... Uh, data protection, uh, you know, law or policy. So you need to authorize them to treat your data, you know, to investigate your information, that kind of thing. Okay, so, but we'll get there. So here you have to put, you know, the place where you are signing from and then the date where you are signing. So imagine uh, I'm signing from Lisbon in Portugal. I just put Lisbon, okay, Portugal, and then I put the date. So using their format so 2022 uh today is third uh, august so 0803 okay and this is where you put your signature so you after you print out the form you can put your signature all right so that is the end for the application form itself so but uh, after that you have the letter of consent so the letter of consent that they requested for you don't need to draft it they already drafted it for you is just for you to put your name, the date, and then for you to sign, okay? So I, first name, surname. So imagine James John Mark, okay? So first name, middle name, surname, okay? And then you put the date. So imagine we are, you know, we are using today's date, so it will be 
2022 okay uh, the month is august and the day is the 12th right and that's it basically so this annex is just you don't need to send this annex page it's just uh, information for you to read you know uh, how the you know the, the data protection regulation how they will store your data and stuff like that and what they will do with your data and then if you need them to delete your data or something you know how you can contact them okay so basically that so once you are done you can uh, you can save it all right you can you can download the form or you can print it to pdf so that you can so you can see that all the information that we put is already there once i if i put print for example so let's imagine i want to save it on my desktop i just put uh, swedish uh, residence application right and then i can save and then goes directly to my computer so once i fill the form and i've saved it i can then take it you know for you know physical printing and then i can append my signature please don't put your signature in in this section here at the top this is for the authority so the person that will be treating your case is the one that will write the case number and then the signature okay so this is not for you all right so thank you for listening and i wish you the best in your application